Good evening, everybody. I am uh, Dr. Anjani Harish, and I represent Dr. Mohan's Diabetes Specialty Center and Madras Diabetes Research Foundation. And I welcome you all to this uh, Facebook Live as part of the Sugar Talk series, and also a new uh, campaign that our chairman, Dr. Mohan, has started from this month uh, called Let's Control Our Sugars. Let's control our blood, uh, blood sugar levels, blood glucose levels, and let's control diabetes. Uh, with this whole COVID pandemic, and we all know how diabetes has uh, posed to be one of the highest risk factors uh, when it comes to COVID complications. Uh, we felt it was very, very important that, you know, we push this agenda more at this point of time, that we get more and more people to get screened for uh, their blood sugar levels, irrespective of they had diabetes before or not, especially if they have had COVID. And with those who have not had COVID or had, or, you know, uh, for a future preventive point of view, also with people with diabetes, to please get their blood sugar levels under control. We have seen many, many cases, heard of many cases, uh, where people with diabetes who have had uncontrolled blood sugar levels have been uh, not in a very good space with res regards to COVID. So we really sincerely hope that all of you stay fine, stay fit, stay healthy. And despite of diabetes, as Dr. Mohan always says, you can always have a long and healthy life. So as part of that, and as part of our Sugar Talk series, today's topic that I'll be speaking on is uh, on exercise. So I think I should have some slides up now. And uh, what the main campaign from an exercise point of view for diabetes is, say yes to fitness and no to diabetes. So when I talk about exercise in diabetes, uh, and though my topic also said about exercise in different settings, I will come to that on what are the different things you can do, whether it's at home, whether it's at school, and especially during lockdown, though we are opening up in many states, but most of us are still homebound, right? We're still going to be working from home or um, kids are at home. So we need to figure out a way where exercise and what we can do at sitting back at home. And even if it's just a very restricted space, what are the things we can do? Before we go to that, Let's speak about what is the role of exercise, not just, and when I say diabetes, please understand it's for all chronic diseases. And in diabetes, we've seen mainly it's both for prevention, control, and managing complications. At every stage, you can do all kinds of exercise, all kinds of physical activity. Uh, a small thing that, you know, I would like to point out here is with regards to exercise and physical activity. People use it, you know, side by side, exercise, I'm doing exercise, I'm doing physical activity. So physical activity typically is, uh, you know, something which is unstructured, something that you're doing on a daily basis, moving around at home, doing housework, maybe walking down the steps to go to the gate to get some parcel, or, um, you know, going to a shop, all that is come kind of unstructured exercise, right? But unstructured physical activity. So that's why it's called as physical activity. Exercise is something that's graded. That is actually, you, you take time out for it. You, you take a lot of time out to sit and do that work. So uh, very, uh, you know, say I'm going to do 40 minutes of brisk walking. So that's a very structured way of doing your exercise. So it's the same thing, but we need to understand, but both are very important. You know, just doing 45 minutes in a gym or doing a 45 minutes of brisk walking and then whole day sitting on that chair is not going to help you. So that's where the mandate of 10,000 steps come in. And everybody would have heard of it, that you need to reach around 10,000 steps a day to prevent any kind of disease. And if you have any kind of a chronic disease, 10,000 steps a day is what will help you control and manage this disease. We'll get to that more in detail. So what are the components of exercise? As I said, you have immediate exercise, the immediate effects, and then you have the long-term effects. Now, all of us, whatever we do, we do some kind of immediate effects. That is, you have this aerobic component. And most common out of it is what? It is always walking, right? Anyone you ask, I'm walking. A uh, few nowadays are into running. And uh, there are jogging, running, and uh, cycling. All these are very common things, swimming. And of course, nowadays, because everything is closed, I'm not getting into those details. But there are a lot of people who are swimming, playing a sport, playing tennis, or playing hockey, or cricket. All these also come part of aerobic exercise, basically, where you're just consuming oxygen, right? Which is, all of us know, has become very, very important during these COVID times. But uh, when we say brisk, when we say walking too, it's called brisk walking. So we will come again to what I mean by brisk walking. But what the mandate is, what the recommendation for you is 150 minutes per week. Now, that can be 
30 minutes a day, right? For five to six days. Or you can do 45 minutes thrice a week. But the best way I would say is to try your best to put in 30 minutes of activity every day. Once you are uh, used to this kind of activity, I assure you, you will you yourself will push yourself from 30 to 45 to one hour. Uh, so people who are used to walking or used to this kind of exercise are the ones who keep pushing themselves. If you're talking to somebody who has never done exercise, okay? So as I said, you might be moving around. A lot of people think I'm doing a lot of housework, so I don't need to do any exercise. So that's not, as I said, remember, that's normal unstructured activity. That's part of your routine. Very, very important, that kind of leisure activity also. But doing a structured exercise is also very important. That is where you take time out, dedicated for this exercise. Please start with something with 10, 15 minutes a day. Go on to half an hour. But your aim should be at least 30 minutes a day or 45 to one hour is fantastic, which means you've really put in your time and you will be covering more or less all the components of exercise. If you can spare 45 minutes of 24 hours in some kind of exercise. Now, when we say long term effects, they're called resistance training. So as you see the pictures there, it's basically you have. Um, let me show this. So you have some kind of weight training happening. Right. So this is some kind of stretches, warm up and cool down. I'll come back again in the detail about it. So you start when your components of exercise, you start with some kind of stretches, some kind of flexibility exercises. Then you do the aerobic component and at least twice or thrice a week, you should try and get in some kind of weight training. Now, everybody will immediately jump up and say, hey, the gyms are not working. You do, you know, not that everybody goes to the gym every day, but still people I'm sure, you know, what we like is excuses. So we would be like, no, we can't do this because now we can't go to the gym. But uh, very simple. You are carrying two kgs weight. Well, you have two kgs of rice. You can put two kgs of water bottle, right? Two liters of water bottle. Carry one, one liter in each hand. That itself, basically what it is, is resistance training. You're trying to give some kind of resistance, okay, against which you are exercising or flexing your muscles. Very, very important, this kind of uh, muscle training, uh, because it builds muscle uh, memory. And it is one of the most important from a long term effect. You're not going to get immediate weight loss uh, from any kind of resistance training, but it will definitely make you fitter and it will tone your body over the long run. And this is what, you know, as you grow older, you need stronger bones, you need stronger muscles, and this wear and tear of muscles are going to happen. So it's very, very important that you build in resistance training at any point of time when you start exercise. You can be 20, you can be 30, you can be 40, you can be 50, you can be 60, you can be 70. Any point of time, you can start this, okay? So there's no age limit for doing resistance training. And of course, yeah, one of the other things in resistance training, all the women especially feel you're going to get muscles. Please understand, you don't have to go. You're not going to a wrestler level. We do, that's why twice a week, even uh, you do it with an authentic trainer, a gym trainer, a fitness instructor, who will see that they work on the specific muscles which are required. And they'll ensure that you do not build muscles like men. But at the same time, you tone your body and you have, uh, you know, you've worked on your muscles enough that it will give you benefit. So what are the benefits of exercise? Uh, it reduces cholesterol. Everybody knows total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. It increases your HDL. So remember LDL and HDL. LDL is the bad one. HDL is the good one. Now the HDL cholesterol, the best way or one of the best ways to increase it has always been exercise. So please include this uh, as part or you know any kind of exercise regime to ensure that your HDL cholesterol increases. Uh, second then, of course, it decreases triglycerides. So if your sugars are reducing, so will your triglycerides, right? So uh, if with exercise, as your sugars decrease, triglycerides also decrease. It will decrease blood pressure. Very, very important. It works on your head. It has tremendous benefits. It has tremendous exercise benefits. So uh, it will automatically decrease the blood pressure. Of course, everyone does exercise with the motive of reducing weight, right? I, I really would like to you know, put that forward through my talk today that it should not always be about weight loss. Exercise, believe me, weight loss is just one of the benefits of exercise. What you should really be aim for, be aiming for, is fitness, long term fitness. That you know, you want link. You, our uh, lifespan is kind of increasing, right? It's no longer sixty years. We have seventy, eighty people living with till hundred years. We don't want to be bedridden after seventy because we never did exercise. We never flexed our muscles. You know, when we should have, we used to go to work. We came back, and now thanks to this pandemic from last two, three years, sitting at home. We sit on one chair like this and that's all we do. So you are what you're doing is you have all these different bones and muscles in your body, which you're not really using. 
So exercise has to be really from a fitness point of view. Weight loss will happen. Okay, there are lots of ways. As I said, it's a combination of lifestyle. So you all know you have to have healthy eating patterns along with exercise to do adequate weight loss. Please aim for fitness and exercise is very, very important. That's why you're thin, you're fat, your normal weight, it doesn't matter. Exercise plays a role for everybody. So increases muscle mass, very, very important, does a lot of benefits. Alleviate stress. Most common thing, you know, you go to a psychologist, a psychiatrist, very often they will say one of the main ways of anger management is just walk away. You know, take you take that walk at that point of time. It will reduce the stress. You know, you, you it a little bit of basically what you're doing is deep breathing. You take some fresh air and you start walking. You listen to some music, automatically it'll alleviate stress. So uh, one of the important benefits, mental benefits of exercise. And very important, and why I added the last point is mainly from uh, for children point of view, because I'll be addressing both for women and kids and you know for overall everybody, it improves attention, concentration, boosts memory. You know, again, because of the lockdown, we have so much of screen time, all of them we're sitting and top of that, even the kids, you, you the more you try to get them out, you can't because all their classes is happening in this box on this laptop. So even if it comes to exercise, maybe they might end up looking at videos and doing it. But as long as they're moving their body, that is very, very important. And this is, again, for children and adults. The more you activate your muscles, the more you use it, the more you walk around. All this also helps in improving a lot of your mental capacity also. So when it comes to exercise, you know, people are very vague. And I ask somebody, what do you exercise? Yeah, I walk. How much you walk? I walk around, you know, for an hour. Okay, you walk for an hour. So how much? But, you know, is there a kilometer you have? Oh, that I don't know. So please understand if you are serious about exercise and you want to make that part of your routine, you need to understand the fit principle. This even for a patient, for any viewer, it's important. Even when your doctors, you know, very commonly, they, we just generally say, yeah, yeah, just walk five days a week. Please ensure you get this right. So fit principle is basically frequency, intensity, type and time. So frequency, as I said, five days a week. Yeah. Intensity, moderate to vigorous. How do you know moderate to vigorous? Is That's moderate to vigorous uh, physical activity is MVPA. That is at least five to six kilometers per hour. I repeat, five to six kilometers per hour ensures you have done your proper exercise for the day. Believe me, you will be close to at least 8,000 to 9,000 steps if you do with that kind of an intensity, right? And type, as I said, aerobic press resistance should be your type. You should aim for both. Uh, and I would include here, of course, time for 30 to 45 minutes at a stretch. But please remember, warm up and cool down becomes part of this routine. Please do not get up from bed, wear your shoes, sock, have a coffee, or sometimes people just drink water and start walking. It is, uh, you know, I give an example always of an old chair. You you are opening a chair which you have not used for a while, especially. It will make all kind of creaky noises. So your bones and all that will also make those noises. So if you suddenly, you know, you got so inspired that you want to start walking, wear some good shoes, wear some good clothes, and you start walking, you might end up with injury. So please don't do that. It's very important, especially even in the morning when you're exercising or evening. Most often a time you would have been sitting till then, right? We are not, all of us uh, are not really moving around all the time. So whenever you start your exercise time, it's very important to start with. That's why you start with a slow walk. And maybe you do a round around your building or your house or if it's just one road you're walking. Start with a few stretches, which I will be showing you in the end. And very important to make that part of your routine. So you start with them and then you go on to your aerobic component. If you have resistance training, add to it. And after that, you end again. You need to end with a little bit of cooling down where you would be some, you know, some pranayama, some meditation and cool down your body before you get back to your routine day. Uh, important points that you should be aware of is exercise regimes uh, more or less can be generalized, but they also need to be individualized because what they're individualized for, whether it's a male, female, uh, your age group, your activity, that is your occupation, what you do, what your routine is, just like a diet plan, it's not one size fits all. Same for an exercise plan, it will not. You need to be aware about uh, you know what are the exercises what will suit you more maybe uh, you know some people have weight more in the arms some people have in the thighs some people have on the belly which is very common i mean most indians do and uh, but you need to know which specific portions to work out 
So it's very, very important that you get in touch with a trained uh, fitness person. Okay, please, there are a lot of quacks available. So please ensure that you're not going just like, uh, you know, don't take diet from anybody. There are qualified dietitians to take your diet and nutrition advice from. There are also qualified fitness trainers who know their job well. Please take that advice from them and then go on. So those are those graded exercise programs because what happens after that, you will lead, reach a plateau. If you do the same exercise after a point, there's very common complaint is, oh, I was losing weight well. I'm on this good, healthy eating plan. I'm doing good exercise. After a while, you, while you reach a plateau, which means you need to change the type of exercise. You know, you need to give your body another, a kind of a change, which maybe will shift from the usual routine that you're doing. So that's why it's important to consult a trained person on it. As I said, warm up, stretches, cool down, very essential part of any kind of uh, exercise program. Wear good fitting clothes, you know, means as in uh, they should be, you could, it's not necessary. You need to wear a track pant and a t-shirt all the time. Even in a salwar kameez is fine. Sari is a little more difficult, especially if you're going into a gym and all, it's a little more difficult. So ensure you wear loose fitting clothing, but at the same time, something that uh, suits whatever you're doing the suits that exercise you're doing whether it's yoga whether it's an asana everything requires proper clothing also footwear also important especially during uh, lockdown there are a lot of people who look at videos and uh, try to do exercise at home uh, if you're doing some kind of high intensity aerobic exercise it's important you wear those shoes at home too you can't suddenly be doing them barefoot so please ensure that you follow all those principles whether you're doing it at home you're doing it at outside these are very, very important. Uh, plenty of water to prevent dehydration, but I would just warn you here, it is not during exercise. Uh, you have it a little bit before exercise and of course after exercise, but all the time during an exercise routine, you do not gulp water. You will immediately end up with some kind of abdomen pain. Uh, we need to learn to sip water when you are doing on any kind of an exercise routine. Have sippers, you have these you know, whether it's a glass bottle or this bottle, just see that you have these sippers. That is why those uh, exercise bottles will be typically be sippers so that you sip. It avoids that you gulp out a lot of water. So ensure you have those kind of, um, you know, sippers where, or even if you're drinking it from a bottle, please sip on water. Do not gulp it. Extreme temperatures are best avoided. Yes, please don't go out at 11, 12 o'clock in the hot sun saying I'll get vitamin D and I will do some kind of running and exercise. It doesn't really work. You know, don't try to mix too many things together. Standing and getting your vitamin D calcium at that point of time is just exposure to the sun for 10 minutes is good enough. You don't need to go running for that. Uh, so avoid those extreme temperature. Morning, evening, night doesn't matter. You need to ensure that you're not on a heavy meal before you do exercise. Please do not have dinner and in one hour start walking. OK, so these, these are very, very typical points of mistakes people do. Uh, always do it before the meal. So in the evening, just before your dinner, maybe, or uh, la before lunch, if you want to do nowadays, I mean, depends on the place you are in. Um, the temperature is nice, then it's OK to go at 10, 11 o'clock. Otherwise, just do it early, do it in the morning before your breakfast. For type 1 patients, since we are still, you know, touching on diabetes, very, very important to check their sugars before and after exercise. Uh, there are a lot of people who, um, you know, think they're doing very aggressive exercise and hence do those high pr protein, high carb meal before an exercise and say, oh my God, I'm going to faint or something like that. Nothing is going to happen. It'll just end up overeating. We have a lot of stores in us. So you don't need to go and, you know, have a heavy high protein, high uh, carb meal just because you're going to carry some 2 kg, 5 kg weights. You don't need it. What you need is a post-workout meal. A pre-workout meal is meant for sportsmen, for athletes, for people who are doing intense exercise for a specific thing, you know, they might be in a competitive sport, they might be a fitness trainer, you know, they, they're into building muscles and things like that. Normal people don't really need a pre-workout meal. Even people with diabetes, if you're going for a normal walk, yes, you 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 know, it's individualized. You cannot generalize. Uh, if you're on insulin, definitely good to have something before you decide to go for your walk. But there are people who still go in the morning and and are fine. So it's your routine. It's your body. Very, very important to hear your, what your body tells you. And even with terms of exercise, people, you know, even end up overdoing it. So please don't do that. There has to be moderation. And listen, if your body says today, you know, you walk, you're used to walking, say, every day, five kilometers. But today, for whatever reason, your body tells you, look, my, you know, your leg starts paining, your head is aching, something means your body is telling you I'm not fit right today I'm not I don't feel like doing five don't do it 
take that break go back home take the rest you'll come back refreshed the next day maybe you can make up for it so don't push yourself too much so uh, you know then it 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 becomes uh, in hindi usse lene ke dene pad gaya that is you and uh, you started to do something nice and you'll end up going five steps or 10 steps backwards so please do not get in you get over enthusiastic follow a routine stick to it but ensure the most important is that you do something every day with regards to exercise now coming back you know to the favorite topic on why this is so important a topic uh that's a little been a little bit more technical scientific this i will come with a lot of research backing also that's what we do as a scientist and i work mainly a lot in epidemiology and public health interventions where we intervene in people's lives in in the you know at homes or in offices even in schools and children with lifestyle intervention programs where we try to help them improve their physical activity and healthy eating patterns so this is from one of our studies and what i'm trying to show you here across states in india 95% of people do no recreational activity when i say no recreational activity basically nobody nobody does exercise in india okay that's the fact only 10% of some population do very diligent uh, 45 minutes or one hour a day and or reach those 10000 steps but 90% of us are not doing that so it's very very important that uh, we change this the faster we change this uh, whole graph pattern where we at least reach come back down you know we should be able to say yeah okay 50% of india is still not doing recreational activity you will see a big change in the graph of the diabetes epidemic too so this was one of our intervention program intervention program called dclip diabetes community lifestyle improvement program where we screened a lot of people around chennai okay the city of chennai in tamil nadu and we uh, got them home and these people are lay people okay they are from communities they are from residential colonies uh, they are from work we we screened a lot of corporates a lot of work sites banks it sectors everything and we got them to our auditorium okay and this is one of the other places when we don't get the auditorium we used to have it in the terrace kind of a place and these are our fitness trainers and we also so we used to have one class on healthy eating and a class on exercise we got them together and we taught them exercise so you can see here people in sarees also and lot of these men have just they've all come back from work they come straight from work we gave them shoes and we made them do 45 minutes of exercise with us on a weekly ones basis remaining days they used to do it at home uh, we had a structured program that people were doing and this uh, study per se when we finished this we the aim of this was to look at how by doing lifestyle intervention we could decrease the incidence of diabetes and we found a 32% reduction in the incidence of diabetes just by these lifestyle changes so uh, you know you say you might say oh people you know you just say these are the benefits but we have done this we've done it in a study testing it was a randomized controlled trial and we showed that this thing really really works and what happens with such changes they are you know you have to make sustainable changes at least we put that idea and seed into people's head that look this is possible and if they could come to our center and do it they could very well do it at their home too and it was not some high fly exercise we gave them a pamphlet we just set a routine for them eventually they knew the structure and they used to do it themselves barriers to lifestyle changes so uh, this is one of the you know core things that we keep looking at because we are interested in seeing why this is not working for people you know why only 10% of indians are uh, basically exercising right what is the issue uh, so when we ask this question you can see most often or not people think it's a waste of time okay uh, we had it was interesting to note that we had a survey on benefits of exercise everybody knows about the benefits of exercise everyone knows how it helps yet people think it's a waste of time and this white is a uh, represents the female and the blue represents the male so all these points if you see just look at the gross difference in how the how many percent of female express it versus male so there were 46% of female saying too much of their time versus 35% of the men uh, similarly few places to exercise didn't matter between two tie takes time away from my family most women though wanted to exercise were too homebound you know whether they were working women whether they, they were homemakers they felt that uh, we you know by exercising going for 45 minutes of walking it was taking time away from their family it was taking time away from their family familial duties due to which they felt guilty they were like this is something you're doing for yourself right and women have this 
sacrificing syndrome so they feel that you know i cannot be wasting so much time on myself i need to do a lot of other things which is meant for my family uh, tires me out look at this number of men exercise tires them out uh, all bunch of excuses so places to exercise far away embarrassed to exercise again you will see more females feeling that you know many places you know wearing those kind of clothes kind of body shaming happens uh, family members don't encourage in many many places in down south and all it's still very conservative even in up north or you know in little bit inter areas people don't really look think that exercising is a woman thing they think it's a man thing still uh, as i said clothes look funny expensive to exercise when we did this is when we realized you know exercise recommendation cannot be the same for men and women because there is so much disparity in the barriers that they face in the end men are still free to exercise they can they're just not doing it and and the only thing is they just have excuses but female have very very valid points due to which they are not able to exercise now i'll jump a bit to children and then come back to adults on what we can do uh you know everyone thinks children in the end are much better than adults right that they go to school okay now they are at home again we'll come back to the pandemic time but before pandemic time people think oh and children in school to so see they have even we again this is part of our orange study where we which we looked at obesity rates and uh, then did an intervention study among private and government schools uh, in uh, chennai again and uh, most of the schools obviously have a pt class right they have 85% children reported they have a pt class but do they have do pt in that pt class that is the big question so among that if you this was uh, it says basically how many of them play outdoors for an hour so just like recommendation for adults is 150 minutes per week uh, you know activity for children it's 60 minutes per day one hour per day your child should be doing some kind of running around please i know everyone will say children to jump around run around in the house not that actual some kind of running or proper some kind of again you could call it structured activity for an hour a day in terms of fitness that's the only way they are doing their day of physical activity that's why you're supposed to have pt class but even when schools used to happen we found especially as your classes go higher we all know pt classes get used to make up for portion so children don't really exercise as they become adolescents they have even more issues suddenly the girls and boys start getting separated boys may still be involved in some kind of activity girls prefer to sit around talk gossip uh, you know look around here and there, but they're not not many of them are very physically active so when you look at this you will see 42 or 43% of the girls uh when playing less than 1 hour a day outside compared to 25% uh sorry uh, 42 43% of the boys were playing uh 1 hour per day outside compared to 25 or 26% of the girls okay sedentary activity is even because rest of the day basically the kids are also just sitting okay even if you're studying you're sitting and you're not really moving around so as students people children think people think that children do more physical activity they actually don't and it's getting worse with the years and the pandemic has just hit it even more badly because now they are spending they have more screen time than ever so that was as i said reported this is reported activity that is we asked children on you know how much time they spent outside playing this we did another study where we actually give them accelerometers now accelerometers are uh, that's what your phones also have uh, when you look at google fit or you have look at i health or samsung health they are all synced uh, with accelerometry so whenever you carry that so here we actually didn't give them phone we give them a small accelerometer which you can you know put it across your waist and or put it in your pocket it will measure actual minutes of physical activity per day and we seen when you look at this even those 45% of boys who we claim to be doing one hour of physical activity uh they're not really doing one hour because remember that's reported the accelerometry data says they only do around 34 minutes a day the girls do a dismal 18 minutes less than 20 minutes a day is what that girl is really physically active actually doing some kind of exercise so overall we found only 26 minutes of adolescents are doing and these are specifically adolescents age group of 12 to uh, 17 years uh, 26 minutes a day during school where actually the parents were thinking that they do a lot of physical activity it is even worse you have pt class you don't have pt class again measured by accelerometry they were doing boys were doing around 15 minutes girls were doing 7 minutes like 8 minutes a day of physical activity and overall only 11 minutes of physical activity was happening in the school so that means they have done some active jumping around playing around something at the time they have just been sedentary so please don't think that children are more active they are as bad as the adults 
uh, this was another study we participated in, which came out with a report card for physical activity in India. And here is when we realized we collated data of all the different physical activity studies done in India. And India got an F. OK, so basically among children and youth, we failed because only 15% of children were really doing 60 minutes of physical activity in India. And I'm sure uh, we there were a few rural schools here. So uh, most of them came from there. Because in urban schools, even that's not happening really. So we have this. You don't have right clothes. You're boring. It's so boring to cycle. It's so boring to be on the treadmill. It's so boring to walk. It's so boring to swim. Uh, we are very tired. You walk to one round. I'm tired. It's too hot. It's too cold. Uh, I'm too old to do it. I don't have enough time. I don't like to sweat. I am too fat, so I will not exercise. So all this is nothing but a term called excusitis. So we just have a lot of excuses and we do nothing about it. Well, uh, as I said, though I said, uh, I, I'm going to introduce something here, which an intervention, which we felt, which, uh, you know, we felt we need to develop for women and girls. As, as I showed you already in the data, men were still doing some kind of exercise, some kind of activity. Women and girls were not doing anything, especially the adolescent girls. So we felt we need to come up with an intervention specific for the female, okay, and uh, which they can kind of put a tick mark on all the things that, you know, they gave as excuses or barriers. We wanted to check that all out. So they, something which was innovative, something which was interesting, sustainable, you could do it long time took less time. Remember, that was one of the most important barrier for women and children. Uh, socially acceptable, done at home, and fun. Fun, especially when you come to an adolescent kid. And with this, we actually developed an intervention called Thunder, where what we did is we combined two things. We combined something called high-intensity interval training. I'm also putting this in because this is something, one kind of exercise that people can do at home, especially during the pandemic also. And we combine high intensity interval training with a common thing that women and girls in India love. What is that? What is the most common thing that women and girls in India love to do? Dance. So it's a socially cultural acceptable thing. You know, women learn dance, girls love learn dance. It's okay for women and girls to dance. It's not a barrier per se compared to somebody going and running and cycling or going to the gym and taking a you know weight. So we thought we will combine these two portions together. How we put dance into a hit format and it came with Thunder, we let you know. But let's go into hit before that. So hit is high intensity interval training. It is an intermittent period of physical effort where you have a high intensity period and then you have a small low intensity period. Uh, typically, the high intensity period, this whole workout, a hit workout will last from around four minutes maximum 15 to 20 minutes. You don't need to do more than that. You can't sustain more than that. Because what you're trying to do in a high intensity interval training is you're pushing your max heart rate, right? You're pushing your heart rate. So you're trying to reach 80% of your maximum heart rate. What you're really aiming for is fitness. Again, as I'm saying, weight loss, everything else will secondary. What you're aiming for is fitness. You're making your heart, your lungs, your overall fitness stronger. You have to start slow and steady. You have to start with warm up. But heat is one of the most recent phenomenons that people have really taken it up well. And it's really seemed to show a lot of improvement in people's fitness. So as I said, it's a high intensity, low intensity intervals. So you take highs and lows. What we did in Thunder is we took a 10 minute hit program. Our program is 10 minutes. We do two minutes of high intensity and 30 seconds of low intensity. And what we do in the two minutes of high intensity is dance. So we do dance to popular Bollywood songs, some of the, you know, different kind of language songs, also regional songs interspersed. And we have set the step start, the repetitive steps. So that's what you do because uh, hit is also fine. Kind of, you know, what comes in is a kind of a circuit training. Uh, you have these workouts all there in YouTube. If you go see, they're called Tabata and things like that. They all kind of fall in this bracket of hit where you do repetitions of the same kind of exercise for a matter of seconds with recovery periods. Whether, as I said, uh, if you're doing one minute of high intensity, they, they also have one minute of low intensity. Then you have one minute high intensity, 10 second low intensity, five minute high intensity, 30 uh, a minute or two of low intensity. So there are different ranges, but the main aspect of any hit and uh, activity will always be, they will be just for, uh, you know, from a five minute workout or a four minute workout, max it will go to 20 minutes, not more than that. The moment they go to 30, 45 minutes, believe me, it's not hit. 
okay you can't sustain heat for that long so it has to be that that's the speciality of heat because you put in your full effort for that short period of time uh, the short intensity basically it engages in your anaerobic system so what happens is also is even you know uh, when you're doing other kinds of walking you take a break you start yapping with people chat then your that effort that you have put for the 20 minutes is gone so whereas in hit even that low intensity that you're doing your energy is still being pumped your body is still working out because you're using the anaerobic system so it is not that you have given it a stop it's just a small recovery period that you're giving yourself to catch your breath and then push yourself further so hit in a nutshell uh, it is high intensity it does not work on target areas it's not going to work on your tummy or hand or leg it works on overall fitness but it includes all, it, main thing about hit is it will definitely include all the exercise type it will be flexibility aerobic strength everything is taken care of it's free okay there are tremendous videos on youtube if you want to really try hit there are lots uh, i would suggest something like a tabata that you should look at lot of circuit training work work site uh, uh, you know kind of workout sorry and um, uh, tandav is not yet up for you know we plan to make tandav videos which will also come up unfortunately due to the pandemic we could not do that bit uh, but we will soon have tandav also released out for uh, use uh, it's all short it is good for beginners uh, the only word of caution would be is you should not have any kind of a heart disease and again i would say listen to your body check i hope you don't have any kind of a, you know leg ache this because since it's high intensity there's a lot of pressure on your feet so you need to be if you're on the little heavier side you need to be sure that you know you're okay with it and if your legs or something is paining maybe you reduce that hit time you start with the 4 minute one it will not hurt then go to maybe a a uh, 5 minute one then a 10 minute one and then maximize your thing but whatever you're doing in, in high intensity check yourself that you know overall your cardio fitness is good and then move to this uh you will tend to get breathless so you should know that if it is it's okay you need to take that break and you will slowly build your fitness you can't learn hit in a day start slowly and steadily but it's one of the best uh, workouts i would definitely recommend you can do at home especially it does not take too much of your time you can divide into two hit sessions you can do one in the morning one in the evening if you don't want to take out a whole half an hour to do exercise uh, no equipments required and as i said it's fat burning definitely uh, cardio pulmonary cardio respiratory strength and stamina a lot of stamina it pushes your stamina definitely so that's how tandav as i said was merging uh, both dance and hit together Uh, at home and office simple stretches that i can tell you is these so right now we've been sitting what for half an hour 40 minutes sorry i can't see my time yeah half an hour so uh, we need you know get up and do your next stretches do a shoulder rotation this uh, w portion is just moving like this even in your office chair that's why i've written at home at office most important break your sitting time you can't get up every half an hour get up every one hour very very important when you're working continuously please get up one hour do the leg stretch do this one you can do this one you don't uh, you know whatever dress you wear you can just okay, make a leg stretch move your hands around move your waist around bend a bit just get up every one hour or something and do a bit of flexibility exercises otherwise this is going to hit you very hard after you start going back to work where you know you're going to move around more but when you're sitting at home very very important that you break your sitting time every one hour so these are very simple simple stretches that you can do at home so uh, you know the i'm sure each of you have done this at some point of time the wrist stretch this pose this one it seems to be very very common nowadays and i've been seeing that in a lot of videos it's a very very relaxing stretch also it's very relaxing to go upwards like this and you know put your leg against a straight wall uh, it's also very good for period pains so it's these are one of the you know all these stretches are something that you can do at home you don't really need to go anywhere to do this these are the yoga asanas and why i put this back to back you know people say i do yoga i don't like doing you know these kind of stretches i like doing yoga well yoga also has asanas and the asanas are nothing but if you see the postures they are very very similar okay you are just doing the same flexibility stretching exercises in yoga but along with a lot of mind connect that is you start you know you you should mix i would suggest this pranayama a few of these stretches with your daily routine that's it that's all you need to do you don't need to get into high intensity yoga you know people say yoga and then go into power yoga and things like that this is also yoga and this is the most basic asanas you can do 
I'm, I'm, I don't practice yoga regularly, so I don't know the names. But these are the most, I, I've done all these asanas and they're very, very easy to do. Then, you know, these stretches are very similar to what I would do as part of my uh, gym routine too. So these are the things that we need to understand that, you know, let's not differentiate. No, I'll do only yoga. I'll do only, uh, I can only walk. I can't do this kind of exercise. They're all very simple things to do. All you need to do is 10 counts of each or five counts of each. And what is the main difference with yoga is also there's a whole of holding that happens in yoga, which you would not do in a general gym training workout. We would do reps, which is repetitions of the same exercise. Whereas in yoga, when you're doing all the different asanas, there's a lot of holding because yoga, one of the integral part of yoga asanas is balance. Uh, we do balance, flexibility and stretching. Uh, but in yoga specifically gives a lot of importance to balance of the body. And that's why you hold all of these counts that you do. So it will be. Uh, take a deep breath in, then you hold for five counts, then you take a breath out. So th those kind of, you know, different routine, everything, even if you're doing this stretch, you would say, do up, down, hold for five counts, then you release your leg, which in this kind of an exercise, you would not, we would just say counts, and that's it. So if you can mix and match and understand the basics, in the end, all you need to do is move around, right? That is the most important, that you move around your body, and you break your sedentary time. Even at home and the pandemic, you can walk up and down the steps in your building. If you have, you're sitting in a house, you might have a yard, walk front and back there. Uh, you can go to the shop somewhere which is close by. Please take the steps as much as possible. Even after the pandemic, when we open up, make it a habit in your office, at home, wherever you are, to take the stairs. Stop using the lifts better till the pandemic goes also. It's a closed environment. Use an open environment. Better you take the staircase. Uh, what are the other simple things that you can still do at home? As I said, Pranayama, there are lots of YouTube videos. There are loads of videos on yoga, on Tabata, on um, you know any kind of stretching. Uh, you do spot walking. Most, most simple. It's called, uh, it's called the Leslie walk. I know a lot of people love that walk and they do it. It's basically nothing but spot jogging. You know, Leslie walking, it's just start with in your spot, you do just keep walking like this. And then as you're walking, you just increase the intensity of the walk and you start doing your stretches. But all the time in the Leslie walk, your leg doesn't stop moving at all. So these are lots of variations available and they're all done at home. And of course, all the apps are available. Uh, you download, there are so many, there are innumerable number of apps available for exercise. Take it, they, you know, it's literally like sometimes a fitness trainer shouting in your ears, they tell you the count also. You just keep it on and you do it. So I don't think there is any more scope for any kind of excuses for not doing exercise wherever you are and it should be easily manageable at home thank you so if you have any questions Are there any questions? Uh, oh, okay. I'm so sorry. I missed that. So I have a question on... Uh, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See a lot of familiar faces. Uh, what are some common exercise for breastfeeding mothers to help control sugar levels for type 2 diabetes? Nothing specific, sir. I mean, even if you're breastfeeding, you can very well do these stretches and flexibility. As I said, something like uh, spot jogging, spot walking, uh, very much possible. Uh, I wouldn't recommend a high intensity depending on, you know, I'm assuming she'll just have have just uh, delivered a few months back so uh, no need of high intensity right now but uh, definitely the yoga asanas is something you can start with you know those stretches and flexibility merging into yoga is something that you could move into definitely uh, you know one of my most common things is when you are stressed out and you're hearing so much stressful news all the time nowadays because of uh, corona just put that music and dance. I think you don't need anything. Close the door, shut the door, uh, you know, or 
tell everyone to move out from that room and just say i want some time for myself and this is for everybody and if you don't like looking and following videos uh it's very natural just put on that music and just move and move like you know anywhere nobody's looking so they say dance like nobody's watching so just dance like nobody's watching it's more important that you move around you believe me you will feel very very good you'll feel very nice you'll be happy because the main thing about music is it kind of sets off all the happy hormones and you just feel nice so whatever it's not about a competition of who's dancing better or not there's nothing like that and even when we do tandav it's not about that at all it's not about dance and who's doing it well it's about picking doing repetitive steps and the most important thing i have done is because we used to set these sessions is in is it just makes you happy and uh, i think that's very very important and then that makes it sustainable also oh so nice to see few of our participants joining in thank you sir recommended pa for children and adolescents best is to play the game amda just let them play a game uh, uh, at home again i i would say for children and adolescents i mean you, you should now would say tandav so just make play the music let them dance just to, even now since we don't have set steps to show you all uh, please just let them free as long as they're moving that's the most important simple resistance exercise with 2 kg weights i would say uh, the same stretches with <clears throat> uh, 2 kg though so whether you have a flat surface then the up and down okay then uh, your wrist flex these ones yeah uh, the same stretches that you do do it with the weights so these are the things that you can do youngest case in orange i think i seen was 10 years i know amuda has more in that but i think in that also in one of the studies i did with her it was a 10 year old child with acanthosis and severely obese uh contra indications for uh, exercise would be uh, um yes i would say uh, if you have some kind of a spinal issue and coincidentally if somebody has asked the next question about a lumbar spine problem uh, contra indications is please check your spine is in order uh, you have um, um, arthritis depending on osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis uh, again i'm not saying you can't exercise but you need to get that cleared with your orthopedic uh, you know physician and check that these exercises are not causing more harm so you know typically after like orthopedic surgery especially in arthritis i am known is keeping your knee straight and holding it uh, is one of the best knee strengthening exercises that you can do but there's also a time to do that uh, not immediately post surgery and also if it's severely deteriorating i understand you're not supposed to do it then so cross check with uh, any kind of you know with your physician before you go into any kind of uh, um, serious uh, kind of training how do you start an exercise regime uh well i would say is a time is very very important so uh you will have to plan it you will have to say tomorrow no matter what i am going to go for say a small walk of 10 minutes okay you want to go out that is if you're an outdoor person if you want to start this at home uh i would say uh, invest in a wearable i don't know it worked for me uh i like seeing my stats on this and i like seeing um, how many steps i have reached a uh, lot of your phones have it your phones have the counts too it has all wonderful apps uh use them you lo look at look into google fit google fit gives you a lot of information uh, we are coming up with a lot of apps i work a lot in digital technology uh try aim to use uh, uh 10000 you know at the, try to touch that 10000 steps i know with the pandemic it's difficult i know myself i i don't touch my 10000 unless i make it a very dedicated effort to go somewhere down and i work or you know walk around at home sometimes you're stuck with this laptop all the time and though i'm telling you all this even i forget every one hour i'm supposed to get up and you know do some stretch unless somebody rings the bell or i have some work or something like that so it is difficult i'm not saying it's an easy or a cake walk it needs a lot of motivation a lot of discipline to follow it uh but uh, there are uh, fantastic role models and you know people who say i'm old i'm young please my favorite example is milan soman's mother i mean you look at milan soman is fine but please look at his mother she's like uh, what 980 something and she does push ups and she can do like 30 40 push ups okay 
so please that age is no bar for any exercise there are and, and it's not i mean nilan sopan mother is my favorite example there are a lot of elderly people there is this other video which i know i have one of uh, a woman who started after at the age of 60 found resistance training that's why i said there's no age bar for resistance training at 60 she found the gym and that was after she had grandchildren and uh, she was like i think her husband passed away and then she said i had nothing you know i was getting depressed and she went and suddenly someone introduced her to the gym and that's how she started and now she if you see her workouts i my god we will be put to shame the things that she does in the gym so there's no age there are a lot of people who have taken up cycling who have taken up walking the marathon runners you you hear you look up any marathon running any any of these guys there are a lot of people who have recovered from a disease let us do rabina cancer survivor or something like that and then come back and you know suddenly gone head on with uh, doing something very serious about exercise but there are a lot of people who after 55 is they suddenly taken up to cycling running uh, so really uh, there is no excuses for young people to not to do anything we should just start developing it and making it an habit so that you know we can reach that age and at least do something otherwise at the age of 16 or we'll be better than the person has insulin resistance and doesn't make lifestyle changes what's the approximate duration that you become confirmed type 2 good question shiny but uh, uh, it's going to be very quick uh, we are uh, south asian we have the south asian phenotype and we are already susceptible to develop diabetes so uh, as one of the you know most of you seen the posters and i know dr mon also uses very often is uh, sir says it is you know uh, i might not diabetes everyone likes to say diabetes runs in my family but the problem is di- you know nobody runs in my family that's why we have diabetes so it's that kind of a thing so diabetes runs in everybody's family now almost 80% of indians i think diabetes runs in the family maybe if we all start running we might be able to prevent that diabetes so please if you do not make that lifestyle change now it's going to be very 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 difficult to uh, sustain just look at it as i said it's not about weight loss i'll keep emphasizing it's not about weight loss it's about fitness think of fitness think whether how you want your life to be at the age of 55 60 do you want to be with a stick at the age of 60 already if not please start moving right now that is the only way you will have healthy bones healthy uh, muscles and you will be able to sustain and you know you should and of course you will be preventing a lot of diseases abdominal obesity is a big big issue we tend to develop a lot of weight on our around our tummies uh, all of us have it uh, and for that unfortunately you have to do very dedicated exercise you have to do the ab crunches you have to focus you have to do a lot of focused ab exercises you have to cut a lot of sugar you basically have to cut sugar from your diet if you are very focused on that uh, ab weight and uh, you will have to do strict changes also in your eating habits to cut on the abdominal fat but from an exercise point of view you have to do hardcore uh, specific target area uh, uh, you know workouts on the abs uh, to kind of reduce that yes we encourage our patients a lot of our patients to use cgms and especially since we still have some time is with uh, covid with the pandemic i think i uh, i have really discovered with a lot of Uh, patients i you know who take my advice also around with the family or friends that is the more they have especially ones who have had covid and you know even during these covid times and they've not been able to meet their doctor regularly cgms has been a huge uh, uh, you know a boom whether it's uh, you're using agp or even for that matter not just cgms even self monitoring of blood glucose i would say even doing an smbg regularly that's the first step has been very very useful for patients with diabetes uh to uh, able to control their blood sugars during this pandemic which is very very important and cgms and you know uh, th- these things have come a lot into focus with steroid use and with a person with diabetes and top of that with mucor coming into the picture uh, these are helping to fill that gap and get people's diabetes the patients uh, diabetes uh, values the blood sugar values back to normal one cannot lose the post pregnancy weight fast i think you can ask every woman who's had a child how difficult it has been to lose uh, uh, that weight so a uh, weight it takes some time uh, we are trying to get so that's one of our target age groups for tandav are postpartum women 
we really think uh, all those excuses that I gave you, that and much more. Of course, the child becomes a priority then. They have absolutely no time for themselves. So that's one of the A places, although they are one of the people we are targeting mainly a postpartum women with tandem. Because I, we really, really feel uh, with the less time and the kind of entertainment value also Thunder gives and the enjoyment at the same time, the excess, I think their benefits will be great in postpartum women. Yes, I would emphasize again, please, no pre-workout meals. Uh, uh, no pre-workout meals, absolutely. There are very, very common people buy. I mean, they start doing 40 minutes of exercise in the gym or rather they join the gym and next day they would have bought whey protein cover and big dabba for 5,000 bucks and kept in their house. Uh, it's not needed at all. Please, you don't need any pre-workout and high protein meal for doing 45 minutes in the gym. That's absolutely required only for sportsmen, athletes, uh, gym trainers, you know, instructors, people who are really focused on building muscles. It is not at all for people who are doing normal exercise, normal exercise or normal workout as part of your routine. Yes, go for a high protein diet, cut your carbs. The most basic that you can do in a lifestyle program is cut the carbs, go for high protein. I never advocate anything extreme. It has to be a lot of uh, moderation and a lot of lot of common sense. Don't overeat, eat when your body asks you to eat and uh, restrict moderation is the key that's the only way out yes prevents uh, people a uh, lot of patients can prevent joint ache very common i'm it's my own example i had a ligament tear two months ago i mean it didn't happen because of uh, any kind of exercise of mine i was just walking and you know in a ditch my leg went and the typical leg ache and for two and a half weeks i had to keep my feet up and uh, suddenly I had to, uh, you know, I, I didn't have a choice. And I realized more than my ankle, my knee was the one which was paining more because it was used to working out and things that I just couldn't do anything about it. And uh, the only thing now is I'm just pushing myself with pains, but I, I'm slowly, steadily trying to do the workouts so that, uh, you know, it doesn't affect, it doesn't strain it more, it doesn't make it worse. But at the same time, I'm. it's not that I'm not doing anything. So it's in a way, a way of my body also telling me that, look, you are focused too much on my ankle, but my knee has started, uh, started giving me an issue because it was telling me I'm not stretching it out enough. So then I started doing a bit of stretches which focused on my knee. So it's very, very important that you listen to what your body is saying, you know, hand, legs, any kind of aches, any kind of a sprain, everything basically just need a bunch of stretches, a bit of workout here and there, and that should be fine. Remember, we are at home. We have more access to food. Any of I see a lot of my dietitian friends also there. Uh, everybody uh, knows, you know, to to have a healthy eating lifestyle. First, you have to have less access to food, right? Now, when you're sitting at home all the time, you have a lot of access to food. So you need terrible, you know, lot of uh, discipline to be able not to eat that food. So uh, it's coming with full empathy. It's we we also struggle though we're giving all the. It is a struggle for everybody. So uh, exercise, that's why it becomes even more important. So that at least you try and balance it out somewhere. And uh, weight gain, weight loss happens. It will, uh, you know, you white put up five kgs. It's not that if you can lose that weight too. So uh, make it, a, you know, just make exercise part of your routine, make exercise part of your lifestyle such that you always have the confidence that, you know, that weight loss will also eventually happen because fitness is the most important thing. Uh, fitness is cardiorespiratory fitness, cardio uh, uh, respiratory as well as cardio health. That is, uh, you know, both your heart as well as your lungs you're working on. With COVID, we know all these deep breathing exercises and things like that. It's very important to have, keep this all fit. And of course, for mental stress to just be away from all that these are important things that we do daily at least to involve some kind of exercise i think we're time up and uh, i don't see any more much more questions so just i think i like to end with uh, you know we have our youtube channel where we have shared a lot of details on exercise we have a lot of our doctors as part of Sugar Talk series giving a lot of awareness on the different screening tests. And I've had my scientist colleagues speak a lot about epidemiology, complications, uh, nutrition. We've had a whole talk on what to eat, how much to eat and why it's recommended. What are the things recommended? So please go on and do look up our website and our YouTube channel for more of these videos. It's there on our Facebook page. And most important, I would just like to end one of the most passionate things that I keep pushing for is vaccination. Please, please go get vaccinated. If you have not yet, 
please don't wait now you know it was covid covid shield now i know people waiting for sputnik next once sputnik comes they will wait for pfizer so most most important is just go get vaccinated stop thinking about what is causing blood clot and what if i die of blood please remember before you die of any that blood clot there are more chances of covid infecting you and having severe infection so it's most important to know that you need to go vaccinate not just for yourself stop being selfish because you 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 remember you get the you're spreading it to other people so most most important get that vaccination covaxin covid shield we have had millions of people taken it there are yes there have been a few deaths but then you know there are a lot of things that go in there are comorbidities there have been severity there has been age uh, how late they went to the hospital so there are lots of things around it so i really really plead everybody stay safe uh, double mask when you go out we're opening up now in most states do not get foolish do not go by how it happened during before the second wave i think in the second wave most of time most of us have covid as hit home in reality which didn't happen much in the first wave thank god but second wave has been close for a lot of people and uh, if we really as a community need to open up and you know go back to bc that is the before corona times we really need to get everyone vaccinated we need to all get into that uh, covid protocol you know it has to discipline ourselves avoid a lot of crowds be within your bubble stay safe stay home stay mask uh, and uh, tune in to dr mohan's uh, facebook page and our channels uh, where we'll keep spreading a lot of awareness thank you for joining in everybody today bye bye good night have a good weekend